Welcome to the CommServe Design Fundamentals Learning Module. In this module, you will learn the design fundamentals and specifications of the CommServe server component and apply knowledge learned from the solution discovery phase for optimally placing CommServe server in environments. You will understand the options and considerations in planning for CommServe high availability and disaster recovery. You will then learn about monitoring multiple ComCell environments using a global command center. Finally, you will learn specific sizing methodologies and planning for the ComServe deployment. When determining ComServe placement in an environment, there are two key components to consider. The first is the production ComServe, and the second is the DR ComServe. The DR ComServe is prepared with the ComServe package to recover from a ComCell disaster. We will discuss ComServe's high availability and disaster recovery in further detail later in this module. But for the time being, as seen here, the production ComServe is placed in the primary production data center and the DR ComServe is placed in the DR site. The biggest benefit of this method is that it allows backup and recovery operations to continue normally in the event of a WAN disruption. This is a common approach to deploy ComServe in a customer's environment, but we will also cover a few of the other possibilities next. The production ComServe could be placed in the DR site, having less operational capacity than the production site, and the DR ComServe could be in the production site. In this situation, ComCell disaster at the production site would not impact the production ComServe and it would not need to be recovered or failed over. However, it is important to understand that WAN availability is a critical factor in the success of such a deployment. Remember that if the WAN link goes down, jobs do not run, and although the ComServe is not directly user-facing, it is required to be online for users to recover their data and perform other tasks, such as searches or recalls. It may sound odd, but in some situations, it may not be possible to have a standby ComServe, dedicated equipment, and connectivity at the DR site. Although it is now becoming increasingly less common, some customers still maintain traditional DR contracts, whereby the provider arrives at their location in a truck and the systems are all built from scratch on hardware that is provided at the time. In this case, the production data center only has a single production ComServe server with no standby in the DR site. Some customers just prefer to go with a more economical path that requires few pieces of hardware equipment. This is where an engineer needs to express concern about this architecture. It is certainly less expensive, but the DR process will take significantly longer to achieve, especially considering the scarcity of hardware in a regional disaster scenario. Also, unless the DR backups are exported off-site, such a disaster would result in no recovery scenario. The use of a single production comm serve is possible, but it is not an approach that is recommended. In some situations, there is not a defined DR site. Take an active-active example, with two production data centers which perform local backups and secondary copies to the opposing location. This architecture involves a trade-off between speed of DR and impact of operations. One way we could determine where to place the ComServe would be by client count. In order to impact the least number of clients, the ComServe would be placed in the data center with the higher client count. However, the client count doesn't indicate the importance of the data. Perhaps a more qualitative analysis is needed. Maybe there are DR considerations to consider. Perhaps production site B has less IT staff with less knowledge or access to backup systems. In order to simplify the DR plan, we could place the production ComServe in that location. Again, in this design scenario, understanding the pros and cons of ComServe placement will help you align the proper design to your customer's goals. Another popular choice is placing the ComServe in the cloud. For customers who are adopting either an all-out cloud strategy or who are migrating and running a large proportion of workloads in the cloud, this may potentially be a good option. 
It would almost certainly mean there is less likelihood of the need of a failover due to the inherent resiliency of public cloud infrastructures that help you achieve high availability for cloud workloads across compute, databases, and storage services. It would also provide improved flexibility and agility, for example, if the customer wanted to perform testing, upgrades, or migrations of the ComServe. On the downside, if the customer still has a physical footprint on-prem, then there would be a distance and dependency factor between the data center and the cloud to consider. Remember, if communication is lost to the ComServe, then jobs would fail to run. No matter what kind of ComServe design you choose, on-premises, in the cloud, or hybrid, it is easy and simple to set up Command Center to protect a wide range of different workloads. Command Center is industry-ready and can support several cloud apps, databases, and object storage repositories, all on major cloud platforms. For the most up-to-date information on supported cloud or on-premise workloads, please refer to the ComVault documentation site. A virtualized ComServe server can be a good option for many organizations, as it generally provides greater flexibility, higher availability, and reduced costs, since separate ComServe hardware is not required. ComServe servers that are installed on physical or virtual machines are supported by both Windows and Linux operating systems. Please refer to the ComVault documentation website to check system requirements. Deployment of the ComServe server on a virtual machine must meet the same hardware specifications as a physical server, such as CPU and RAM, and with dedicated resources for the VM. If the virtual environment is not properly scaled, the ComServe server could become a bottleneck when conducting data protection jobs. Another consideration is whether the ComServe should be standalone or clustered. The most common standalone deployments use a single production ComServe. Clustering provides high availability of the ComServe. In a clustered configuration, multiple compute nodes work together as a single entity. If a failure occurs on one node in a cluster, resources are redirected and the workload is redistributed to another compute node in the cluster. This ensures constant access to the ComServe in the event of a local system failure. Clustering the ComServe does increase the cost and complexity of an overall solution. However, it can make sense in certain enterprise environments where automation and availability are critical. Clustering relies on Microsoft clustering technology or a supported third-party software solution. Please refer to the ComVault documentation website to check support and compatibility. The ComVault software uses Microsoft SQL Server as its database engine. By default, ComVault installs Microsoft SQL Server 2019 Standard Edition during the installation of the ComServe software for both Windows and Linux, which is covered under Microsoft's independent software vendor royalty license program. The Microsoft SQL Server database that is installed on the ComServe computer must be used exclusively by the ComVault application and cannot be shared with other applications. Depending on their individual environment requirements, organizations can also optionally configure an existing SQL instance or manually install SQL Server before installing ComVault Server packages. Please consult ComVault documentation for a current list of supported SQL Server versions and additions for use with the ComServe database. For clustered deployments, you install the ComServe software on the active node first and then on the passive nodes of the cluster. MongoDB is installed as a default package when the ComServe web server or web server light packages are installed. Alternatively, you can install MongoDB as a standalone package. ComVault software uses MongoDB database engine to provide performance improvements for some list-based pages on the command center. Since MongoDB database engine handles some of the ComVault software's operations, it is very much possible to see MongoDB expand on its role to offload additional operation. ComServe placement should be favorable to disaster recovery situations. There are commonly two types of ComServe disaster recovery solutions that can be implemented based on the recovery point objectives and recovery time objectives of the customer. The first is manual DR with DR backups and restore. 
Next is ComServe LiveSync for high availability disaster recovery. We will discuss each of them shortly. SQL database mirroring feature has been deprecated by Microsoft and may not be available in future versions of Microsoft SQL Server to protect customers' ComServe databases. Because of this, it is recommended that you build customers' ComServe disaster recovery solution using the ComServe LiveSync method. The first DR option is to recover the ComServe by utilizing the default disaster recovery backups. In this method, all the necessary data required for the DR is automatically backed up at least once per day. In the event of an actual disaster, you can use the DR backups to recover the ComServe databases onto the same or two DR ComServe server to minimize the recovery time. The process of a ComServe DR backup is as follows. First, an export process copies a metadata backup of the ComServe database to the default staging directory and then exports to the specified export destination. You can specify a local path or a network path as an export destination. Ideally, these export destinations have metadata of the ComServe database and should be located away from the production ComServe. Additionally, Commvault supports export destinations like Metallic Cloud or third-party cloud storage to store copies of DR backups automatically. Metallic Cloud uses Azure to store a copy of the DR backup metadata. To configure DR backup uploads to the Metallic Cloud, you will need a working Commvault Cloud Services Portal account. This service stores five DR backup copies by default, which includes the latest five fulls taken on each day, along with the latest differential copy, if any, and is retained in the cloud for 90 days. This ensures that a recent copy of the database is off-site and cannot be accessed by a rogue process such as a ransomware attack. Finally, in backup phase, the DR metadata is backed up to a storage policy location, where it can be retrieved if the export copy does not exist. All processes, schedules, and export backup location are customizable to meet the customer's recovery point and time objectives. The second DR option is the High Availability ComServe Host, also referred to as ComServe Live Sync. This feature keeps the ComServe server ready for disaster recovery and provides the ability to quickly fail over to a designated standby host in the event of a disaster. Hyperscale X appliances with ComServe installed can also be utilized as failover hosts if the customer's environment has them. When a failover is performed, a designated proxy client routes the request to the standby ComServe host so that the clients can seamlessly connect and continue operations with the ComServe host. This solution provides organizations with a lower recovery point and recovery time for disaster recovery of the ComServe when compared to using DR backups. The solution also features a one-click failover mechanism that automates the multi-step recovery process, preventing human error and speeding up recovery. You can easily perform failover of the production ComServe to a standby ComServe in both planned and unplanned failover situations. Additionally, you can perform maintenance failovers, for example, to install service packs on the production ComServe host and then simply fail back to production once the maintenance has been completed. Finally, a test failover ensures that the failover process is successful. Test failovers also ensure successful restore operations after a production and or maintenance failover. For solutions that consist of multiple discrete ComCell environments, it might be worth considering a global command center feature. You can make any ComCell environment a global command center and associate other ComCell environments as a service ComCell environment. The ComCell environments that are monitored by the primary ComCell command center are known as service ComCells. The global command center feature provides seamless switching between different service ComCell command center views and manages aggregated data across multiple service ComCell environments. For guidance on how to configure primary ComCell and associated different service ComCell environments, please refer to the ComVault documentation website under Global Command Center. This slide describes best practices for physical disk and logical drive layouts when planning your ComServe deployments on either physical or virtual machines.
The Microsoft Windows Operating System and Commvault installation binaries should be installed on the C drive and placed on a RAID disk, set configured to fast spinning or for larger environments, solid state drives. Some additional disk space is required for temporary files copied during the installation or upgrade of the CommServe and Microsoft SQL Server software. The CommServe binaries may be installed on a separate disk set if you wish, but this is not essential. The CommServe database running on Microsoft SQL should also be placed on a dedicated RAID disk set configured on fast spinning disk, solid state disks, or enterprise class SSD, depending on the hardware specifications for the environment. On machines running Linux, the Commvault application binaries should be installed in the opt path that is different from the path used by the Linux operating system. The Commvault database will be installed by default under the path opt forward slash Commvault DB, which can be customized during the installation process. For guidance on the latest disk sizes and recommended RAID configuration, please refer to the Commvault size and performance requirements on the Commvault documentation website under Hardware Specifications. Commvault provides a detailed hardware specification guide to help you determine the correct hardware to run the CommServe that meets the scale of ComCell you are designing. Hardware and software specifications can change from time to time with new releases of the software. Therefore, it is recommended to always refer to the Commvault documentation website for the latest specifications. These can be found at documentation.comvault.com. In support of appropriately sizing opportunities, the Commvault Solution Design Tool has been created. Workload information collected from your data profiling sessions with your customer can be entered here. The tool will then provide a breakdown of the kind of resources that are going to be required for the environment, along with projecting the future needs that same environment may require down the road. Be sure to use the tool to easily build, see, and share designs in order to deliver a complete proposal to your customer. In this module, you learned about the design fundamentals of the ComServe server component and how to apply certain knowledge learned from the solution discovery phase. You also learned about options and considerations in planning for ComServe high availability and disaster recovery, and then about monitoring multiple com cells using a global command center. Finally, we covered specific sizing methodologies and planning for the ComServe deployment. Thank you for watching. This has been a presentation on ComServe Design Fundamentals.